Do they have any ulterior motive for not wanting the very best for their children? Everything. If they're rich, they want their kids to know. All that I have is yours, honey. You're going to inherit it anyhow, so whatever your heart desires, I'll get it for you. The kids know, and they go through life with that sense of joy of financial security, being out of financial fear, that sense of financial freedom. It's just, it's like a god. It's like like an LSD trip or something, ecstasy in their whole lives because they're on a money high because their parents are so cool and benevolent. Well, that's God Almighty. That's God's place and nobody else's. You understand? If your parents are rich and they endow you with it, but they won't endow others, you just object and say, parents, I don't like that. I don't like you favoring me just because I'm your biological kid or adopted or step or, you see, I, you know, you understand what I'm saying? All we all do it, right? We can't afford to give presents to all, everybody, right? So we have to be a little selective, especially if you're poor or not rich, at least. I mean, I can't buy presents for everybody on earth, but God can just with freedom from birth, security from birth. No way for any man to get an advantage over another and nobody around you that wants to get an advantage over others. Is that the reality now? No. So the true reality that we've got to prepare ourselves for is dramatically, profoundly different from this one. That's what we got to get ready for. That's why on one hand, we should hate our lives in this world because evil men are temporarily currently running the show at the same time we've got to try to honor our parents and enjoy our lives to the best of our abilities and be thankful grateful for our existence as a human being these godlike very special creatures with the potential with with the offer of eternal life in a paradise that's what's held out to us that's the promise christ made you understand new bodies just to believe god can give you a new body why shouldn't we believe that? That death is, is not really death, but as it's explained in scriptures, Christ explained it. It's like sleep. Remember, he was raising the dead right and left. The father raised him up. Or he raised himself up. I mean, it's no difference. The only difference with Christ never sinning is that he didn't have a natural dad. You understand? So he did have a big advantage. You know, when he said, what I have done, every man can do and more. That's likely meant, you know, in getting the message out, the good news, that God is all good. Vindicate God's name. God's not responsible for anything bad. The curse that befell the earth is because the evil one got a lot of power, and he's a hater of you because you are made the image and likeness of God. He is not. Now he's like a serpent. He's ugly. That's what the demons are, and that's what they challenge God's authority. They want to exalt themselves above him. That's what he does. He makes sure you identify them as you repel when you see the face of evil. And if you could see in the souls of these, they look human, but if you could see in their souls, you'd see that demon spirit that's running the show. It's all about money and alluring others and dragging others down to the depths with them because misery loves company because they're sick. Just remember, they'll be the, who's going to be running the show? <clears throat> Once the harvest of souls of men and the wicked are separated from the righteous, the meek and the mild. Who's going to be running the show down there? All these uppermost money-loving madmen, murderous, conscienceless, soulless madmen are going to be running the show. Those are the ones, the bullies. So you want them ordering you around for all eternity, telling you what to do? Because your heart just, you know, whoopsie-daisy, I was evil and I didn't know it because I, I thought it was practical to be a money lover. I mean, you know, who doesn't love money? What liar? What idiot doesn't love money? And God understands, right? Of course we all love money. So that does make us all culpable and evil. You see the problem here? You see, you see what I'm driving at? The paradox, the schism, that separation, the original sin, the fall of man and the subsequent curse because of free will choice, which was necessary for us to be these very unique, very special, very godlike creatures we call human beings. And we gotta let others know they're precious treasure. Don't buy the lie 
that the spirit of this world will feed them. The way they take advantage of people. I mean, they've totally normalized slavery through the debasement of the money. Always chasing your tail. You know, young, struggling young couple, you know, with mediocre jobs, thinking they can save enough because in previous years they were able to if they tighten their belt. You know, stuck in this financial sand pit. They're working diligently hard in you know, a couple jobs and dig myself out of this pit of sand. And someday I'll be, you know, middle class homeowner. I'll have a sense of financial freedom and financial security. And then these evil men and the executive, you know, the president and the Congress and Senate and the Federal Reserve with private interests involved keep dumping more sand to make damn sure. You stay down, boy, girl. You stay under their thumb. Just be content to be a rent slave. We'll give you your gadgets, your smartphones to play with, your social media. You think you got it going on because you can drive a nice car. Because you can. You know, a lot of people drive a real nice car but be rent slaves. Or they can have equity in the house, have a second, third, fourth mortgage on their house and drive a new car whenever they want because of their equity from their unearned increment in the, in the gains in the property values they got the mainstream media telling us oh property values going up inflation that's good for business <clears throat> hey it's good good what's good for business is good for everybody isn't it so they're telling you that your money being worth less is a good thing right so, you know, why don't they do that across the board? Say, well, you know, housing is essential human need. So if you're going to tell me this essential human need, it's good that it's going up in cost, price, burden, but it's the value that went up really in equity and good for business. People go out and buy stuff with their equity. So they go in debt, stay in debt forever, but they can afford to keep paying it minimum. That's good. Well, then tell us it's good when the price of eggs goes to 10 bucks doesn't it? I mean, why not? Hey, it's fantastic. It, well, it's good for the egg manufacturer. Shut up. Shut up. It's good for this group of people. Shut up. It can't be good for everybody. I mean, you know, life's not fair. Life's not fair. Just get used to it, man. Come on. It, it, stop, you know, bucking the trend, man. Go with the flow. Comply, conform, capitulate. You should have got on the bandwagon with our thinking a long time ago. Because things are really getting sewn up now, man. We can't keep raising our rents forever. We'd like to, but we know there's a limit that people are going to start figuring out. And local counties and governments are going to say, no more building until we have homes for the homeless. That's it. You either donate it or do something else. Or get out of that profession. You don't like it, get out of that profession. Every one of you is choosing what you do. Don't blame me. Who else is making the choice, your life choices, but you? Don't be a contractor. Don't be a carpenter. Don't be a skilled craftsman. If you can't afford to offer your services to everybody, if it's always the investors, always the money, I seek the money. This is capitalism. No, it isn't supply and demand. It's rigged. It's manipulated markets. It's pseudo-capitalism, crony capitalism at best. It's fraud. It's fascism. It's nothing good. My country's been going down the tubes my whole life since I was five at the assassination of JFK, who was getting rid of the Federal Reserve. Now we owe these people $32 trillion. He was already circulating a new dollar. We didn't need the Federal Reserve for boo. Now look at it. And who's paying that interest? How do you think we carry that $32 trillion principal? It's off the backs of the poor. Now they got to reach up for fresh blood. More middle class. We got to keep them down. Down. Rent slaves. Stay our rent slave. We got to keep those high mortgage costs. Keep those high rent costs. And tell people it's good value, man. Your rent went up. Hey, the value went up, man. Sick. Perverted. Well, friends, listen, I'd like to say I was hamming up for the camera, but there is some real passion in me. I mean, it hurts me. See, I want to be able to enjoy my good fortune. And when I feel lucky, I want to feel, wow, everybody else is lucky. Or when I go to bed at night, I, I, I wish the homeless had it better than me, better. That would make me happy. You see, so it is genuine at least. But, you know, it's, see, I'm trying to juggle this being cute and adorable and, and angry, rightfully angry and indignant at the same time simultaneously 
and God is the only hope I have because God's doing it, so somehow it's possible. But it's eluding me for now, friends. I love everyone. I want the best for you. I'm on everybody's side. I'm just imitating Christ because he was everybody's friend, even the evil men, especially the evil men. That's what it's all about is winning them. Hey, stop being evil. Repent or perish, friends. And going to that place, that dark place I talked about earlier, that's not a life worth 